Hey guys, still working on this arch craft arch top made by the K company somewhere between 1933 and 1937. I got a whole playlist going on with this guitar. I'll give you a link right up there. We've done all kinds of stuff to it, starting with fixing a hole, fixing some cracks, replacing the back binding, which is virtually gone, doing the front binding, and now um, we are thinking about putting a pit guard on it um, and part of that pit guard is so I can put a pickup on this. Now as soon as I started talking about putting a pickup on this, people started freaking out because I said, why would you take a period correct instrument? Now we're talking about about the time that people were recording like Sun House and um, Willie Brown and Charlie Patton and stuff and I, I've talked about period correct guitars, um, steel bodies and these arch tops. So this is something that if you want to hear what they had to play with, this is something you get. So I don't take it lightly that I would um, do anything to it that's irreversible when I'm talking about putting a pickup on it. So before I did anything to this, I took it to someone who was very familiar with you know, stories like this where Crossroads Blues, um, going to talk to my friend Willie Brown. Anyway, I, I tracked down some of this really, really good guitar player that understands the period correct music of that time before it became electrified and had them play it. And I'm going to share that with you today. And ultimately, the playlist for this guitar, when it's all done, will have um, this video at the front of it where you can hear it before anything was done to it, cracks, holes bad binding, everything just the way it was when I got it, and then ultimately at the end where it's a screaming hot rod, but all you got to do is pick, turn things off and it would go right back to what it was. So once I'm done droning on and on here, what we're going to do is we're going to get a few minutes of uh, somebody playing this, and that somebody is Frank L. Goldwasser, who uh, is uh, up the coast from me a little bit, and um, in his... Uh, early part of his career, he was known as Paris Slim. Get this album if you can. Good luck finding it. Paris Slim. But Frank uh, came from France. He was attending an art school, pre prestigious, rented lips, art school over there, and was studying the blues. He's told me some um, stories about how he found the blues and Hound Dog Taylor and and some stuff like that and it's very interesting to talk to him but when you hear him play and you talk to him it's really clear he understands who Reuben Lacey was and his influence on some other people and his style can easily at least acoustically before he plugs into an amp uh, can go back to this period correct. So I had a good time talking to him. I took a few guitars over there and just handed them to him. He'd never touched them before and was playing them. So this guitar here, you're going to see uh, some clips of him playing that. But um, Frank uh, became part of the California blues scene around Oakland, up in the Bay Area, and has been a fixture of the California blues scene since. Now, he's got a few CDs out uh, and... Um, he still plays, um, and I enjoy my time with him. So I'm going to give you a link below um, to this stuff so you can listen to it. I, I guarantee if you get some of this you're, and find out who Frank L. Goldwasser or Paris Slim is, you're really going to enjoy that. So I'm going to go back to working on um, the pit guard here and uh, talk about making some brackets. And ultimately, we're going to put some electronics on here. We're going to put a pickup on here. And some other stuff and it may shock you how I do that but while I'm doing that um, go ahead and stay on here and listen to Frank play this guitar when I just hand it to him and I'll catch you in the next episode V-neck, that's, that's kind of, that would also be a period uh, feature. Well, I roam and I tumble 
going out, I cried all night through. Well, I was going and I tumbling out, I cried all night long. Well, I woke up this morning, didn't know right from wrong. Well, if the river was whiskey, I was a diving duck. And if the river was whiskey, I was a diving duck. I would dive to the bottom and never come back up. Yeah. <laughs> 